Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out Come to Where I'm From. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated. You reached Josh Rouse, I'll call you back. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. What's going on? Not much. Got a show tonight. Up here doing a few shows. You know, I put out a holiday record. So. I listened to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Thanks, man. It's yeah. Super it's interesting. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When did you decide to do that? I've been working on a song since about 2010. Mm-hmm. Every holiday, I, I had a, my first kid 2009, so a lot of time just sitting around. Right. You know, I said, I'm going to do a holiday song. That's cool. Yeah. And then it turned into an al- album. And then I just, I kind of, you know, I, or I'd have an idea. Yeah. You know, like Mediterranean Christmas or something like that. I like, like that. That, that uh, opens it up. Yeah. And then uh, I wouldn't finish it. You know, I'd just kind of work on it. And yeah. then I kind of realized a few years ago that I had a, uh, I had like eight, eight songs. Right. You know. I'm sure you do that. You look back and you're like, whoa, look at all these songs I never, or even ideas. This this is a good idea that I never did anything with, you know. I never have time to do that. But, you know, when I do look back, it's like, wow, that's a good song that I kind of disregarded at the time. Yeah, I find that the longer I do this, the more those ideas don't get done. Right. You know what I mean? Like when I was younger, it was like every idea was like a work of genius. It (laughs) It was like very important. Yeah. That's, I feel like that is good energy. Like that's like maybe one of the not good things about going on and on and on as you start valuing less those things. Yeah. To a degree. Yeah. You know? Kind of, yeah, just push them to the side. Yeah. And then it's like when you have to make a record or when you want to make a record, that's when you like really start finishing stuff. You become right. a finisher. Yeah. You know? Which is, it's hard to do as well. You know? Yeah. Um, I kind of, uh, as I get older, I find that um, if I can stay in it long enough and really try to get it done, it just in that, the I, I, be, I become really lazy too. I, I mm-hmm. or I'll, I'll, that's a great idea, and I don't want to like jinx it and like try to finish it now. I'm gonna let it marinate for a while and come right. back to it, you know. Or I'll get like a slew of ideas within a two or three day period, like almost an album, you know, just yeah. kind of a vibe. And it's like wow, yeah. you know, almost kind of the same chords the same modes you know it's like oh this would be a great record mm-hmm. and then i go well i'll come back and work on those and then sometimes i do and sometimes i don't mm-hmm. yeah, yeah and you you work in modes and sort of jazz flavors too like sometimes yeah just moves. into that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I, like even this record this uh the christmas record yeah it's quite jazzy i think yeah or, that was the idea was kind of to make it uh I guess it, during Christmas time, I've I've always liked that kind of almost, um, you know, jazzier flavors. Mm-hmm. Vince Guaraldi, right? Or kind of the Nina Simone thing, you know. It's just kind of cocktail music in the background. Yeah, That's, that was kind of part of the idea. Not... Who is who played on it, and where did you record it? I did it at Alex the Great Studio in Nashville, which I've I recorded a lot of records there, and it's a band that have played on a lot of my records. They're called uh, Joe Mark's brother, actually. Joe and Mark are in the band, and then um, a bass player called Hags. And then a guy named Brad Jones, who's produced my 1972 record in right. Nashville, and um, he plays vibes and piano on it. Mm-hmm. So it was just, we don't, it's one of those great things where you just get in and I show them the song. And uh, I have to have my homework done because they're so good, they'll get it first or second take. So right. there's not a lot of going back and go, oh, I don't know if the chorus should go there, you know. So right. it, I had to do about a month of really kind of in going, okay, this song is, here's where it's stopping and ending and, you know, just really tight. Yeah. So I did that and uh, and then it was just, you know, first, second take, everyone had it and had the, you know, I, I'm probably like you, you give them clues like this is a, the groove needs to be like this or this is what I'm thinking and then mm. just get it. There's then we don't have to talk too much. It's nice. How, how many days did it take? Three. Just that's it. Yeah. It's live tracking. And then we comp between the live tracks. Um, sometimes it'll be like band take 
no click tracks or anything. You know, they're just so good. They just get, you can calm yeah. between the tracks and this. Ah, oh, the time's great. Even Fine. drums. And then the vocals will be. A, you know, if we did three or four takes, it'll be a comp from the. You know, the vocals bit on the second. I'll fly that in. Mm -hmm. so. so you're not in the room singing with them, or I am. Oh, you are. I'm in, no, I'm in. A, they were in a different room. I was in a in different booth. room in the studio. Yeah. It's actually it's kind of the entryway to the studio. It's got like tile floors, like Spanish tile floors, and uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. yeah, are you living in Spain still? I know. No, you're no, back in Nashville. In Nashville, I'm kind of back and forth all the time. But yeah, I was just there doing some shows. And how long were you in Spain for? I moved over there in 2004, and then moved to Brooklyn. I think that's the last time I saw you. Maybe like 2007 yeah. or eight. We were standing outside. You were st you just played a Bowery or something. Uh huh. And you're like, what are you doing here? Right. <laughs> and I was like, I just went to a party and walking by. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, because you did the thing everybody fantasizes about doing, moving, moving to, to Europe. Moving to Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, we, my girlfriend, well, she was, I think she was, yeah, my wife at the time, she became pregnant, and uh, we said, hey, let's go back to Spain. And uh, did that, and was there for eight years, and moved to Nashville a few years ago. What was that like, being, like, moving to Spain and doing that? Um good you know i i learned the language the first few years you know i took lessons and really tried to get up to speed because there's right. far too many dinners or things you go to and you're just yeah, that you guy do it. Uh, your brain's just fried yeah. you know you can the first you know hour and then you're like well i just want to go home and right you know, read a book or watch tv or something in english you know mm -hmm. so um I mean, it was great. I was still every few months for the first few years I was there. Every few months I was touring, and you know that was probably the height of my career almost. Mm -hmm. You know, well, it's coming the height. Yeah. Once this Christmas record <laughs> takes off, dude. I mean, it's gonna be huge. This Christmas market, yeah, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was listening to it. I was like, man, I should make a Christmas record. So that's a good sign. Well, that's cool. That's Thanks, good, man. No, yeah. for real. I was like, you know what? This is a good idea. Well, I was on tour with Nick Lowe, and he had just done one. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, that's a cool Christmas record. I right. want to do one right. now. Right? Yeah, you, know? you did like, it. Because I listened to it in March, you know. Yeah. And I was like, this still works in March. It wasn't like. You know, Silent Night and like uh, sleigh bells going. You know, it just yeah. it was his sound with some Christmas. Well, the cool lyrics. thing about it's a it's yeah the the weird vibe about a Christmas record is it is for a specific thing. Yeah, in a specific time. You got about a month. But that keeps repeating. Like twenty years from now, your Christmas jams will still be like going yeah. through like some kind of department store. You know that's, that that's, or yeah, or I'm just gonna play. You know, I'm playing up here now or yeah. West Coast. You know, it's just kind of seasonal work. Right, but <laughs> that season keeps coming back around. Yeah, yeah. So it's nice. Yeah, I like the whole. Uh, what's the one about the red? Uh, red suit. Red suit. That yeah. was good. Too. Yeah. Thanks, man. Just like. I don't know. It so, had this whole only different take on Santa. Santa. Yeah, it's the like only Santa's Santa song. Santa's a badass. Yeah. It's got Ray-Bans. Yeah, it's got Ray-Bans. Black, yeah. black boots. Yeah. Like, they're polished Chewing up. Chewing up the neighborhoods. Yeah. 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 And the bass, when he goes down the chimney. Woo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. You yeah. listened to it. Yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's a good band. They really, it's they listen record. to lyrics and they just kind of... <laughs> Joseph Get Arthur it. Christmas album coming in two weeks. Do it, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. That would be for. That's a good question, though. Like, when did you? Yeah, how when? Long? Like, you got to do it six months out, or do? Would, I, we did it last after the last Thanksgiving last time at this year. Mm -hmm. We were doing it, so I kind of want it to be in the season, you know. Oh, okay. So a year to plan. Staying yeah, true. Yeah. Exactly. So, so we'll put it out next year. What's it like being back in Nashville? Well, you know, Nashville now is. It's the new, it's the new LA or Brooklyn whatever. Or, everything. Yeah, it's yeah. the new everything. Yeah. It's fun. I, I like it. You know, yeah. I was there when it was a sleepy little music town, you know, it was myself and like Lamb Chop and, you know, outside of country music, there are a few kind of indie rock bands and mm -hmm. people doing cool things. Um, uh, and then I moved back and it was the property prices were crazy and, right. you know, a bunch of hip kids running around, but I dig it. I like it. New restaurants. It's gotta be fun. It's fun. And I, I, and I love that uh, there's all, you know, there's different kinds of music there now, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Black Keys, White Stripes, or I mean, not White Yeah, the Stripes, Rockers Jack moved White. in there. Yeah. Justin Timberlake moved there. Is he? Yeah. Do you see him walking around? Probably? No, he's out in Franklin. Oh, you know, is that the fancy part of town? That's kind of the Christian-y. 
Oh, Christian y? Yeah. There's a whole Christian section? Oh, yeah. Really? Franklin's very Christian. So it's like lots of Merry Christmas signs up in Franklin. <laughs> Jesus and Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, I didn't know he was Christian. I don't know. I, I think, you know, I, I don't know. But that's, you know, Franklin was always the very, um, very, very churchy part of of Nashville. You know, mm. Very religious. Yeah. Part. It's in, you know, it's about 30, 40 minutes outside of Nashville. That's cool. Yeah, I didn't realize that you didn't start writing songs until you were 18. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That, I don't know. That surprised me. Well, I mean, we're at 16, 18. I got a four track and made oh. up stuff. Okay. And was that your first album, the four track stuff? No, it was an eight track. Eight track. That didn't come out until I was 25, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. Eight track um, Tascam 38. TR38. And what was like your, what was the big inspiration for you to start writing songs? Who, who were your favorites or was there something that happened that put you in that direction? Nothing. Uh, my, my grandfather played music. He played uh, country and western music. He mm-hmm. was from Nebraska. And you grew up in Nebraska. I lived there. I never knew him. He died when I was two, I think. But his uncle, his son, excuse me, my uncle, his son, played. And he kind of got me into it, like Neil Young and oh, okay. you know, kind of the 70s singer-songwriter stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how I picked up a guitar. And then, um, but at that time I was listening to... You know, I was going through a punk phase. Mm. So, like uh, who? Oh, just anything that Fugazi. was Fugazi. Fugazi. I like the Fugazi. I like the poppier punk stuff. You know, the Ramones, Sex uh-huh. Pistols, kind of the the poppier stuff. But I think Rebellious Teens. You know. Yeah. And and then I suppose around around eighteen, I got into you know. I mean, for me, R.E.M.'s first 10 records were pretty big. You know, just that lyrical, yeah. Michael Stipe's lyrical. I didn't understand what he was saying, but it was just like, wow, this is great. Yeah. I don't know where this is coming from, but it's... So that was a huge influence on me. Right. Um, the songs were catchy and um, they were fast. A lot of the songs were just cooking, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that was, you know, uh, getting out of high school, getting into college. Um, R.E.M., was, they were kind of like the... I went to, in, I was outside of Nashville. So in the South, they were, uh, I mean, they became big everywhere, but in the South at that time, they were um, kind of like the college, a college rock band. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> yeah, I, I was into Reckoning. Yeah. That was, that was big for me. Yeah. That one. Yeah. There was just this mystery kudzu thing about it. It was kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, folk art thing that I really got into. Um so yeah that was and then i was in kind of band different bands like that and then uh did you always front it never worked no i was a guitar player and kind of writing you know helping the songs out but i I always noticed that i was the guy that was kind of most the most driven you Mm -hmm. know like i wanted to get a record deal and i wanted to be in the music business right you know or i wanted to do it for a living like johnny wanted to watch the game and you were like i don't want to watch the game yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) no it's like well we got to get a man you know we got to try to get something going on yeah but that didn't really happen until I was... Y'all don't understand. I need this. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I was going to college and I was like, I don't want to really do anything else. Mm. You know, I want to do this. What were you studying? There wasn't in, a plan B. In college. Yeah, I didn't have Philosophy. One okay, yeah, no plan B. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is just songwriting. Yeah, Fodder, right. yeah. basically. Exactly. And then so you kind of took it to the solo place, I guess. Yeah, just years of being in bands and trying and, you know, you're in it with your friends and trying to create something that's going to sound that people are going to like or that, mm-hmm. you know, someone's going to respond to. That didn't really... It happened, but not... I kind of knew it as well. It just wasn't that great. Right. <laughs> so I was just valley parking cars in Nashville, working for tips, and... Uh, the drummer guy who played with me said, hey, I, I can get some time in the studio. I'm working on houses and stuff, doing construction. So I went in there and made a couple demos. And then next thing you know, I was, um, um, he actually passed it around to some people. And, and they said, hey, could, do you mind if we send this? to?" Be? And it just kind of happened like that. And then there were a couple major labels interested. And Ryko Disc was interested. That's who you signed to, right? That's who I signed to, yeah. All the major labels at that time, um, so that was through a cassette that went, went around? Yeah, exactly, yeah. They kind of flew into Nashville, and I wasn't playing live. I didn't have a band or anything, but there was a... 
So I showcased in a place like this and a bunch of people came. No, I kind of put a band together. Yeah. And uh, I hadn't played on my own as a singer that much, but uh, this is very similar to my story. I bet. Yeah, because I was a bass player, this, that, and the other, and then my cassette went around, and it was like when I first did the auditioning thing it was kind of like i was totally faking yeah it. you hadn't been hashing out in That's, clubs no, yeah yeah <laughs> no, not at all make it till you make it yeah yeah so did it did it go rather well I guess? it did yeah but the major labels were like these are good demos that you've been working on uh you know we need to f- we we want you know we'd sign you and what do you think about producers and all this kind of stuff and mm-hmm. rykodis was like we were like we like this right you know it was the eight track thing that i've been doing which is w- w- more indie you know yeah. but um, and I said, well, that's cool. And he's like, we'll, we'll put out more than one record. It, what was happening at that time in Nashville is there was, I had some other friends as well that were getting signed to, you know, Warner Brothers or, mm-hmm. you know, there was kind of a signing spree. And, and uh, they were making a record at, with big producers and, and it wasn't coming out a year later. And, you know, yeah. they were kind of like, wow. So the feeling was like you could do that, but if the re- maybe the record wouldn't come out or it would come out and bomb and then your name's kind of mud, you know. That was, not mud, but it was kind of, oh, that didn't work. Right. You know? So you kind of had to rebrand or Another something. Another thing to overcome at yeah. that point. Yeah, and it was happening a lot. So Rikudis was like, hey, we'll just develop this. We'll do a slow grassroots thing, and uh, you won't have big budgets or anything. But uh, So I did, just decided to do that. Did you? Do you have regrets about <laughs> that? No, I, I asked that because I have, like, some, oh, maybe I should have... Oh, there was an opportunity there, but I like dug into that integrity thing. Like I got introduced to Glenn Ballard before yeah. my first record came out, right? And at a party, and, and through the president of the label at the time. Wow! Yeah. And he was like, "You have a great movie, you just don't have a preview, aka a single." Right. But I was like, I was like, you know, that integrity thing was huge then, the nineties, yeah. the you know. Yeah. And I was like, well, this is my album, and I dug yeah. my heels in. And, you know, it, it, it went triple, uh, you know, like aluminum, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, right. <or> whatever, <laughs> <laughs> you know, copper. Like, it went copper, went copper it yeah. went straight copper, you know? Yeah. And that's one of those things where it's like, I'm like, Hmm, it, hindsight. If I had that to do over again, I'd have been like, yeah. Like, I don't know why I was like stuck in that thought that it had to be this, like make a single with homeboy. Like, right. So what? Yeah, but, yeah. You know, but like those are the kind of things. So that's why that's where that question came from. No, yeah, I went through some of the same stuff. I think it was later after I'd done a few records with Ryko Disc, and it was definitely growing. Uh, I maybe should have went on. I know there was some interest. Uh, I should have went on maybe to a major label because it was you know all of a sudden I was yeah. selling fifty thousand records in the states and you know like a hundred thousand records almost every mm-hmm. every record and i was starting to play for you know a thousand people here and there and, and that mm-hmm. was maybe that that was a good time to kind of like okay let's get a bigger machine behind this yeah um but early on no because i was kind of like you i was like no this is i'm doing my thing i'm my thing yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah your 20s you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and i and i remember i think my second record i had a single that was on um a soundtrack and Vanilla Sky. Vanilla Sky, Vanilla Sky. yeah. Cameron and that was from the second yeah. album. Shout out Cameron that was the second Crow. Al- yeah. And uh yeah. you know, Jeff Buckley had a song on there, McCartney did an original song, yeah. R. E. M. That was a huge movie. I remember yeah. I went and saw that in the theater. And everyone said, Tom This Cruise. is gonna blow up, you know. Yeah. I went to the premiere and there's like, You're gonna be on this this is gonna you know, your career's gonna take off. So there was this hype. Yeah. And uh that didn't really happen. the the soundtrack kinda bombed. Um I don't know why everyone was on it, you know. Right. I mean, big, big groups were on it. <laughs> well, back then, Radiohead was on it, and like Radiohead was huge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and big, Cameron, I think and I Cameron jinxed Crow, it. Who, yeah. Now oh, come on. I doubt it. <laughs> he wasn't that big back then. But was he it? was like, you know, a music guy. It had all the. No, he was all... coming off almost famous, which yeah, he really? was huge. That was after. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and he knows music, and it was like also probably has lots of connections but i guess that the culture decides you know? yeah but you know what uh, almost famous actually wasn't that big i think we i, I thought it was really no i was talking to mark kozilek the other day oh and he goes you know that wasn't a, that only premiered in like five theaters it was like a couple years later it just kind of really this kind of cult thing happened with it that's funny i was like really he's like yeah yeah well what were you guys talking about almost famous for because he's in it 
Oh, he's in it? Yeah, he plays in the band. Oh, he does. I said, man, you had it going, you know, he had a nice... He was in almost. He was in Vanilla Sky as well. Really? Yeah. And he He's was like, it was great. Like red Red House Painters. Yeah. 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 And he was like, that. that was great because I'd do a record and tour, and then Cameron would call me, and I'd be on set. You know, it's like, damn. It's nice to. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. What were What were you talking with him about? I he was in Nashville playing. I got gotcha. um, And then we just we were talking about stuff. Yeah. He's great, huh? Yeah. Interest, unique. Yeah. Yeah. He's a. Uh, his the stuff he's been doing is all narrative now yeah know? it's just great i hadn't heard anybody it's like rap almost you know but yeah um uh it was great it's kind of like bill hicks crossed with um with uh i don't know he's kind of doing some jazzy stuff too that's yeah. funny bill hicks reference I asked him that, and he was like, "Yeah, he was like, I've been getting that a lot lately." Why? Why Bill? Just Hicks? dark humor, you dark know. Dark humor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Especially the banner in between songs, you know. Yeah. He was like, "Man, I, I didn't feel like half the crowd left because he was kind of, you know, he's talking about Nashville first chorus, first chorus, but having a good time, you know, like right. funny, like it I was like it was comedy, shit. yeah. Tension. We were crying exactly. I like tension. I like awkwardness. That's, I love it. That's entertainment. Yes. Yeah. I like. I can't believe people would leave for that. Yeah. I, and then he was. I try he was to like, co- create as much awkwardness in between songs as I possibly can. That's the best shit. Yeah, it's gr- <laughs> it's, it's great. Just like that's energy. I think the musicians get it, and, and, yeah. and I'm surprised his crowd is pretty kind of made up of musicians. You know, that's, that's interesting. What they think. And plus, he's like so I, I would think popular or something. Yeah. At least I don't I don't know. I haven't seen one of his shows. Well, he was at City Winery, and he didn't. You know, the City uh, Winery in Nashville. He was like, "What well, is like 55 and over crowd?" <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. just everything was, you know, uh, it was, everything was... It was a little contentious. Yeah, it was so good, though. I was like, this is a great show. Yeah, that place is huge, though. The, the City Winery in Nashville. It's a big room. Yeah, it's not. It's not it's like uh, great to play. Yeah, must music. Be five, six hundred people. It sounds good on a stage, but to watch, you know, or yeah. to, it's just kind of like a high school gymnasium or something. Mm-hmm. You'd have to really have a huge crowd yeah. in there, I think, to make it. Yeah. You know, God bless City Winery, though. Do you play there a lot? Or you played City Vineyard last night, right? Yeah. Well, we were going to do the show in City Winery, but it closed. Right, it's closed, yeah. I'm doing I'm doing City Vineyard January 1st and 2nd. Nice. Yeah. Did you get on there? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I guess they got a new sound system. Okay. Yeah. yeah it sounded good. They do, yeah. they do. I was just there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They upgraded, just so you know. Okay, well, this, yeah, it sounded fine. It there, sounded yeah. good. So what do you think about this whole modern music business now, like oh, compared man. to what we were talking about with Ryko Disc and yeah. the labels? And you the, probably so, sold CDs, and, and I did too. I, yeah. Everyone was I'm like still, happy. Like still selling, I mean, not selling tons of, but like still making CDs to sell. Do you still make CDs? Are you well, make, Yep Rock do, yeah. because uh, Yep Rock's putting the Christmas Yeah, I've been out. with them for like 10 years now. Oh, okay. Um, but I think, you know, physical product now is tough for Yes. Yeah. And I'm guilty of it too. I'll go to a show, and you know, if I went to go I see you, I'd buy a CD. Why I would won't. I? Why but I'd would buy I your buy vinyl. A CD. No, exactly. Maybe a vinyl. I'll buy. I'll buy your your record. But I'm not on Amazon buying vinyl all day. I'm not that no guy way. either. You know. Nah, I'm not either. Uh, don't have the space, and I mean, I like it, but uh, so I guess I expect that from my fans. But they're kind of at the same time. They're probably just streaming it. Mm-hmm. They are streaming it. Yeah. <laughs> I make paintings. I'm just like, there you here, go. buy a painting. There you go. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, you want to yeah, support yeah. me? Buy a painting. Yeah. Great. Great you idea. You know, because it's like, I don't know. It's interesting, though. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's, start a podcast. Yeah. That's another way. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a tough time, man, for, for um, I mean, I guess I was just, a, or I am just, you know, working class singer-songwriter, you know, going around trying to play when I can. And yeah. Put out records every few years, but um, what's the key to keeping yourself emotionally and <laughs> mentally <laughs> Lots together, <of> therapy. <laughs> uh, together enough to do this? Because like, it, it takes a lot. It and, does, and you've survived in it well, and you're and you keep thriving. So it's like I don't think people oh, understand necessarily what that takes to uh, keep an artistic career going. Um. I just desire, I guess, to keep doing it. Still got that thing when you were yeah. like, 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 hey, we got to get a manager. Yeah, remember why you started. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, what reminds you? Um, 
what reminds me? I don't know. I'll get excited about anything, probably yeah. like you, you know, I'll get yeah. excited about um, um, a, a new little keyboard, OP1, that just came out. Oh, I want to check that out. Oh, you man, know? I have an OP1. <laughs> you you want to get rid of it? <laughs> Dude, it's I, I feel bad. I like, I kind of broke mine. <laughs> and it's Did like you get frustrated too, with it? No, I accidentally, just oh. through bad care, and now it won't turn on. Oh, man. I need to send it back. But that is the coolest keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. I want another one. Yeah. But they're too expensive. Yeah, they are expensive. <laughs> so, yeah, any, anything, you know, or just, you know, I have friends that keep doing it and we'll work on a song and, you know, it'll take a couple songs and you're back in it again. You mm -hmm. know, you're kind of like, wow, I think this is good. What about like emotional and mental health? Like you mentioned <laughs> therapy, but like, do yeah. you do, do you do that? Do you do anything like yoga or anything? Yeah, like I do. I do yoga. Yeah, me too. I did today already. Oh, great. I'm supposed to go no, to another one. I need like a lot of that. Yeah, me too. Like seriously. Yeah, just to keep from, um, yeah, it's hard to, to stay all day for me just kind of, especially when you're touring and all the, you know, all the little logistical things that can go wrong or whatever. You yeah. Know, it's just not, you know, you got to check in on yourself. Oh, this is cool. You know, everyone's cool. Right. <laughs> How are you touring? In a, in a van, in a car, rental car. I mean, sometimes I'll go out on a rental car by myself. I do that a lot. You know? Um, I do, right now, I kind of flew up here, and uh, I'm playing with a percussionist, and Brad Jones, who produced the record, he's on piano. So we mm -hmm. kind of flew up here. I'm renting a car later, a van, and we're driving to West Nyack to play some performing arts center. And then the rest of the band flies into Philly and D.C., and then uh, we just have back line, and we do it, and they'll fly back, and... How long is the little run? That's just like a week. A week? Yeah, and then I have something in Nashville. But I just got back from Spain and po Portugal, and I have a band I play with over there, too. And you still have, uh, like, a social situation yep. over there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you still with your wife? Girl, yeah. Wife? Yeah, we have two kids. And yeah. Wow. Yeah. What's that like, raising the family? And so, she's in Nashville with you, I presume? Like, she's in Spain right now. She's coming to Nashville in a week, I so think. So you guys so. kind of go back and forth? Yeah, yeah. That what sounds city? so fucking rad, dude. <laughs> Thanks. Honestly, it might be hard to like keep it. <laughs> it all is, up, yeah. That can, like, yeah. That's the reason outside, I need yoga like, sometimes too. Yeah, it's yeah. not like simple. I'm just living in this one. No, yeah. Ever since you moved to Spain, I w I've been a little bit jealous. Ah. You know, because you just did the, the thing that a <laughs> yeah. lot of people. My friend did that too. He moved to Paris. Oh yeah, great. City. And the uh, same thing. I'm just yeah. like, man, people that actually do that. Is he in music? He is. He's okay. a front of house sound guy. Oh okay. But he, he did it, and he has a, you know, French, like, wife and kids. And right. Same sort of situation. Yeah, yeah. I don't regret any of it. I've, I've had a good time. I've had a great, great life. Um, but, yeah, I, the same thing, kind of the emotional, uh, you know, supporting a family doing this, too, is, you know. I yeah. guess that kind of keeps me going as well. I was talking right. to, um, not to name drop the whole time, but Go John Doe. We, we share the same manager, and he's been doing it, you know. I kind of, I think maybe five years ago, I started looking at people that were in their, you know, late 50s and 60s. Still Who's doing still it. doing this? Yeah. You know, uh, John Doe's one of them. He's you know? killing it. And uh, he was like, yeah, the ki kids will keep you making music, man. Yeah. You know? And that's kind of true to some degree. It's like, uh, you know, the touring and, and putting out a record. And I, I have a company that I work with. It. There's always a way to kind of make ends meet if I kind of keep on an album cycle. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Like a, a company of... Well, Yep Rock. Yep Rock. They're right. always, hey, let's, you know. Let's do it. You, have you got something new? I'm like, yeah, I've got this thing I'm working on, and they just kind of let me do what I want to do, which is great. Yeah, I was listening to an interview with you, and the, um, and I think you said something about when you... You did make a record in Spanish, didn't you? There's a song, yeah, or, I think three. there's three songs three in Spanish. Songs. It's and, a great record. It's called El Turista. And you said that like it went really well, but the Spanish didn't take yeah, to it. Yeah, they didn't want me singing in Spanish. <laughs> what? Like uh -huh. that surprised me because I would think they would be like, even if your Some Spanish was like a little like ropey here and there. Like to me, that would even be endearing. Like if right. I was Spanish, yeah, and I knew you and saw you doing that, I, I would think they would celebrate that. I think the women liked it. Mm -hmm. You know, D but dudes but weren't having it. Dudes weren't ha especially like, the dude critics. You know, the dude critics are your older Spanish. Uh, you know, so guys, are we just like, talking about some like bitter yeah, critics that didn't it. like it? And but yeah, that's critically, it. that's it. I mean, uh, people still came to the show. Doesn't yeah, matter. yeah. 
Critics are always going to have something, yeah. something to say. Yeah, dude. but it went well in the other parts of the world, you know. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even take. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean the Spanish didn't take. But I was touring with the Spanish band at that time, and, and uh-huh. you know there were, you know, big paper would come out, and there'd be a review of the record. <laughs> you know, uh, it's really? that thing they're kind of hiding, and it was like, don't worry about that, you know. But you dude. toured in English in Spain, and people, yeah, n- knew you. Yeah, I. Um, so when you returned to those markets with the Spanish album, it was. Fickle? Yeah. Well, I I was and I was oh, that's living a good there. Question. You're talking about the. Yeah. yeah exactly. Was, 1972 is a big record in Spain. Exactly. Yeah. And so Nashville was a big record in Spain. Spanish and I made one called Subtitulo. It did really well. And then the next one was some of it. Oh, I'll do a couple songs in Spanish. You're like, oh. The critics, you know. The critics. Right, but in the in the physical room, did you hear chatter when you were doing the Spanish stuff or? No, oh, I mean, a few giggles, maybe, right. you know. But I had a good accent. I, I didn't feel like when I did it, like, oh, this isn't good. You know, at first I was nervous, but I said, no, this is this is really good. You know, I, one of the songs was mine, and the rest of them were, you know, one was a Bola de Nieve cover, which was a Cuban pianist from the 40s, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I went, I hadn't listened to the record in a long time, and I went back a few months ago and listened to it and said, wow, this is so good. The arrangements on it are so... That's, that's de- it's definitely like a cinematic uh, record. You know, there's big string arrangements on it and there's lots of bossa nova and um, it's beautiful. Isn't it fun when you like go back to your old stuff and you can't believe how good it is? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Not for real though. It's like, and I was like, sometimes I'm like, man, I was good. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was better than I thought. What the fuck? Yeah, you kind of got to go back and give yourself props a little sometimes, bit. Sometimes, like, yeah, you know? Yeah. What was the I don't, recent one for you that you did that? It was a track off of Redemption City, oh. which I produced and did this whole thing. I never put it, you know, it's like, it was put out for free on the internet. It's a very but I, different album. I, 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 yeah, and I heard it, and I was like, man, that's like actually really, like that's it's good. far yeah. better than what I had thought of it as yeah. in my mind, you know? Yeah. How and many I, records do you have oh now? Oh, man, so many. I don't know, 15? 15, something like that, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Like, and then some side projects, too. Yeah. You know, how about how about you? This, uh, 12, I 12, think. 12, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we've been basically going same time. At, at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I remember when I was... Uh, I think my second record, I was flying up here to do something, and, and yeah. the guy, I think Ryko Disc had been sold to Island Records, mm-hmm. and so all these Island people kind of came in, and um, that was a time when they were like, can you give us a single? You right. know, I had just finished the record, and they were like, that was the only time I really had pressure to, you know, can you write just one? And I didn't even know, what do you mean, right? I, I don't right. know what that would be, you know? Yeah. I, it's not in there already. I'm trying already. Yeah, exactly. I mean, right. I'm, I'm try- always trying to I want to be the Beatles. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. I, I'm not trying to do something that's <laughs> yeah. avant-garde. This right. is pop music, you yeah. know? So I I didn't know how to do that. But they were like, if you could just give us one. I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> trying, <laughs> man. Yeah. I'd give you, I'd give you the white album if I could give you the white album. Yeah. Um. So, but, and then I remember one of the radio guys talking about you. He's like, you ever heard of Joseph Arthur? And I said, no. He's like, oh man, he's like the new, I can't remember what he said, but he was hyping you up a lot. And that's when I. I really let that guy down, turns out. (laughs) Yeah. Did you work with (laughs) Island too? Were you working? No, I'm just kidding. Because he's like, I'm the new this. And I guess I wasn't the new that. But that happens. I was the new something too. At that, You remember that at that time. Oh yeah, dude. I would like, you know, like see your things and go, man, Josh Rouse, everybody loves him. Yeah. I'd say the same thing about you. Man, fuck Competitive. Fuck that guy. That's too funny. Why is he getting all this press? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> that's too funny so are you writing with like do you ever write with young new artists yeah like are you doing some of that yeah that was kind of I part of the reason to really go back to nashville is, yeah. is help people out that uh that are half my age I yeah could be their fathers you know interesting yeah. I, i'm i've been doing a little bit of that too yeah and yeah half my age thing even even less than half it's my so age. young now but I still like when yeah. I'm hanging out with them. I feel like we're still friends. Yeah. It's just until I look in the mirror and see that I'm way older than them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But it's so interesting. And you kind of become part. Uh, you know, you're helping them craft songs, but and then you're part therapist or kind of advice. Yeah. You know. Right. It's like, what do you think I should do about you know? It's like, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know if that happens with you, but I've been, yeah, that's does. the younger people. It's like, man, I've got to be on social media all day. It's so stressful. It's like, yeah, man, sorry. Are you doing the social media <laughs> thing? Yeah, but, uh, you know. 
here and there. I'm not from that generation, you know. I no, I have to. It's yeah. it's you know, and I could probably do How it more. How many TikTok more. followers do you have? I'm, yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Yeah, That's I mean, there's always one. something new. Yeah, and there's it's just uh, I'd rather spend more time working on the music than you know taking a picture of myself doing this or that or you know it's it's, it's the it's the age of self-promotion right mm-hmm, now yeah. you know and i didn't come from that you didn't either you know you, no. there was a team that helped you do that and right. you could communicate with them but there was so much more mystery you know i didn't yeah. want to know what what tom waits was having for dinner every night that right. made me want to you know be into his world you know i don't want to see that yeah you know yeah, i think it's things. taken a lot of the mystery out of you know absolutely rock and roll yeah and it's also just like yeah Cause, but we're like well, in the '90s. It was like you were supposed to seem like you accidentally were getting found out as <laughs> yeah. being a yeah, mad yeah. genius. Yeah, and you're right. like, I don't want this attention. Yeah. Get it away. Right. Whereas now, it's like the age of just like people just like like obviously grasping for attention. Right. It's just that part of humanity's on blast, yeah. and it's t- never going back inside. I don't think. I don't well, know. maybe it will. Like when like the, you know, Brave New World happens or whatever, and then yeah. people really don't. Want there you go. Or something. Yeah, just a, a complete backlash against the. Are you doing? Uh, have you developed any other as- aspects of your life that are like, um, like, because as I've gotten older the last few years, particularly, I've gotten very into like boxing and athletics and stuff like that. It's become a very like a passion on the level of music for me. Nice. Has, has anything like that developed for you? Yoga. Yeah, yoga. Yoga, just exercise, really. Yeah. Um. And, you know, soccer, I guess. I don't play, but my kids do, so yeah. I'm a soccer dad. Oh, you, know? you are? Yeah. Well, That's they grew fun. up in Spain. You know, they lived in Spain. So yeah. then when they came so over the, to Nashville. The football, they must be killing. They were they were killing. I was like, okay, I never thought I'd be that dad, but <laughs> right, I'm that now dad like, now. Yeah. I could just see it. They're on the travel teams. I saw and it in your face just then. You're like, okay. I got like the, it's like, fun, man. You're like, yeah, like your kids are badass. Yeah. So That's it, rad. Yeah. And they're into music, too. So That's cool. How old are they? Eight and ten, the two boys. Those Amazing. Real what? Madrid fans. What's their favorite? Uh, Valencia. Team? Valencia. But they know him. You know, my oldest son knows every worldwide. You know, all the leagues, the names of the players. He collects the cards. He has albums of cards, and he trades them, and he, he knows the names and teams, and you know where they were from. And so cool. That's cool. Yeah. Are they going to uh, try to like? Well, they're too young to like th- to think about if they could go pro or anything like that i guess but um yeah, you, i mean we uh, talk about it a little bit did. it'd be cool if they did that you know <laughs> yeah like flying around Fuck watching yeah. your your kids play in stadiums and in soccer matches even it was you know i mean i'm probably what a third division singer songwriter so oh, come on. even if they were third division top, i think you're first class dude <laughs> well thank you <laughs> yeah but on a on a popularity, on a popularity scale you know yeah. i'm playing city vineyard i'm not i'm yeah. not it we're, yeah we're both know. rocking around the third division i guess <laughs> <laughs> you know, that doesn't mean it's not good hey, but it doesn't mean we're not going to get to that first division. that's right too. That's those right. dreams like keep alive do you do anything Along those lines, like I listen to Abraham Hicks a lot. You Who's know, that? Like, uh, she's like a manifestation guru. Like, okay. Talking about like manifesting your dreams and all that kind My of stuff. My wife's into that. I like Sad Guru. Have you ever heard of Sad Guru? Oh my God, that's Somebody so fucking funny. Yeah, right? Ralph mentioned him as like being sort of criminal. I, I like Sad Criminal? I like Sad Guru too. Yeah, no, I was surprised to hear that. No booch? Ah. Uh. <laughs> would, you, would you want some kombucha? Yeah, I do too. I like yeah. it too. Yeah, no, um so sad guru. yeah i i hadn't i like him as well i did the inner engineering online course i got it for free and i, d- I dug it yeah no i like i like him too yeah i like every but i, I, I don't see how it's criminal and nothing he's saying is isn't really kind this, of true uh, you know? we had a guy on the podcast yesterday named ralph sutton actually i'm gonna go on his podcast after this okay uh and he's a cool dude but he was yeah he does this thing where he like investigates gurus and then decides if they're like full of shit or not and, mm-hmm. he, and he said sad guru was one that was full of shit and i was surprised because mm. i like sad guru too yeah so i'm not i'm personally not saying that right but then he told me told me a list of some stuff but what was the inner engineering thing i think you know out right right outside of nashville there's he's got a huge there's a big um a big Buddhist temple out there Uh so I was going to go out there and meditate and because I signed up um, 
they had some kind of a cleansing thing going yeah. on and it was like a hundred bucks so i did it, it so that kind of came with it you know right. the online oh cool of course and uh it was cool i dug it you know i'm, I'm up for any information man it's yeah. kind of uh you know, we live in some kind of, we're living in some crazy times. There's a reality, you know, a reality TV billionaire spoiled freaky precedent here, Super you know? Freak, yeah. yeah. I, you know, it's, it's nutty. So any kind of. And the of, left is going ape shit. Too. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But this I is mean, worldwide. I mean, in Spain, it's happening too. There's yeah. far right people that are, you know. No, it's like the, ex- the extremes are both going wacky. Right. right. In my opinion. Yeah. You know, I, I'm kind of like becoming shockingly more center yeah the older i get yeah me too you know what i mean me too. whereas yeah. i would have thought i was more radical left before yeah but i i'm really big into free speech yeah so that kind sure. of freaks me out the, like the deplatformings and stuff yeah. like that have you followed any of that kind of uh-uh. stuff anyway yeah i don't need to go down that <laughs> rabbit hole <laughs> but like, you know it's got me in a more of a middle middle vibe yeah feeling you yeah know? i think i think definitely things need to change i like this tulsi got Ga- Ga- i don't know how to say her name anyway but um is it a new a new candidate, candidate. yeah she's a democrat but she's more kind of you know just more in the center i think yeah she like also, you guys are freaking the fuck out yeah, yeah. you guys i mean both Ber- need to calm the fuck down you know i like bernie <laughs> sanders you know yeah. i mean i think for a long time uh Everything he said, me, I, you know, I lived in a in a socialist country for How a long that? time, you know, and everything he says. And they had uh, universal health care. Right. For, yeah. Education, I, you know, into, my I'm wife went that. to university for almost free. You know, I think she paid for books and stuff. Yeah. But, so I'm, my kids are going to go to school there, you know, if things yeah. don't change. It's like, wow, I don't have to pay. Yeah, I think like, so, like you know, I'm not into communism and, and, and that kind of stuff or even what I would say socialism, except for uh, I do believe health care is a human right. And, and I, so I can't. Yeah. So I can't divorce myself from that. Right. And I do think people should be have access to education right it, that the two basic things is, is being healthy basics. and being educated yeah. yeah and then i think with those in line then you know do some pulling up by your bootstraps because that also believes in humanity's ability to do that like right. you know what i mean if you take you can't take like there's that thing of like uh victims of trust funds mm-hmm. so to speak mm-hmm. or like you know dylan's got that line helpless like a rich man's child yeah yeah, yeah. you know like yeah you, so you don't want to make people helpless no in that exactly way either and, and that is a danger so i agree but i definitely think you know if somebody's really sick and they can't afford some shit let's save them yeah Come on. yeah you know yeah. what i mean like, yeah so yeah but um so it, well, I'd like to have a salary just for doing what I'm doing. Me, Wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the older I get to, oh, it's like, yeah. anybody <laughs> wants to give me a few grand a month just yeah. to be, you know. Yeah, I'll, Rain I'll kind of Phoenix disagree. brought that up, that she thinks patrons of the arts should come back. And I, I'm down Hell for that, yeah. too. Hell yeah. I'm down for that. Okay, so, so yeah. Like I mean, I'm 47 I'm and I'm still hustling. 48 you know? over here, bro. I'm hustling. Oh, me too, dude. You know? But you know what? I don't mind that. Like I and I'm hustling too, and there's days I get frustrated where I'm like, "Fuck, come on, dude!" Yeah, or God or yeah. whoever, like just like throw. Michael like, Bublé needs to do one of my Christmas tunes. You <laughs> come know? on, Michael Bublé, <laughs> dude, it'll happen. Let's put that out there uh, yeah, for Abraham, that, Abraham Hicks style. You know, put that in your vortex. But yeah, just that windfall that just takes the financial pressure right, away. Right, like, that's it. You yeah, know? but uh, I gotta say, I think. It, it ultimately the fact that there's still a very real fire under my ass about survival yeah is not a bad thing yeah i, I mean I, I, I could you know like even like the the prime of our lives apparently like have you ever heard of that book called think and grow rich no napoleon hill Mm-mm. he talks about like the prime of a person's life is 40 to 60 really that's it and that was like in the 30s they said that like that those are your most creative years which you wouldn't think because like when we came up it was like once you're 27 if you weren't kirk Cobain, you might as well you You had 10 years yeah Yeah, that's it like make it to 60 back then in the 30s they made it to 62 (laughs) 62 no so it's like uh yeah, so I, I feel like... I want to check that book out. That sounds good. Think Thinking. and Grow Rich. Thinking and there's a part about sexual transmutation in it. Wow. All kinds of stuff. It's deep. Yeah. He also has this book called Outwitting the Devil, which is real interesting. Okay. And there's a whole interview 
with the devil in it. And yeah. the devil even like is telling the truth about the whole thing, apparently. Okay. And and when you read the audio book, I mean read listen to the audio book, mm-hmm. the devil has a you know, a different character voice and it and it it kind of makes you think like, man, he did tap into like like the book Conversations with God, it sounds like that guy tapped into something. Wow. But uh, it sounds like he tapped into the devil. And the devil even says, don't, uh, like, he, I think he asked him at one point, why are you being so honest? And the devil was like, because you're not going to publish this anyway. <laughs> and if you do, people will hate you. Right. And you're not going to publish it. Wow. And the fucked up thing is he didn't publish it. And his wife didn't publish it either. It didn't get published until they both passed away. Wow. Isn't that fucking wow. wild, dude? Wow. It's great. So. And this, this was like the 30s? Yeah, like around the 30s. Napoleon Hill, interesting, yeah. interesting author. Yeah, because I suppose in that time, you know, you had a lot of, it wasn't musical art, it was artist artists, you know, that was a big, so probably he kind of saw Dali and all these people, mm-hmm. Picasso, all these people in that time that were, you know, their prime of their life was 40 to 60 or Right. Yeah. I as far as being internationally big. Yeah. Well, with painters, you know, painters often have their first show and like they're forty-five. Yeah. You know, it so like as a painter, like to... you know, as painters, we're young. Yeah. We're in. But this, that, we're he's in just talking. He's 20s. talking about anybody. Yeah, he's talking about it's anybody. Just, uh, okay. Like, I, and I don't know where he got that information from, but like that—that's like because that's the mix of your knowing, like you have you enough have knowledge, experience, yeah, wisdom to, but you still have vitality. Okay. So we're, it's okay that there's still a fire under our ass. Okay. All right. Let's put it that way. Thanks, man. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're like, we'll talk, like, we'll do this again when we're 60. Right. Yeah, let's and do it. And then if we don't have, like, <laughs> lots of easygoing abundance, then yeah. I think we should be concerned. Yeah. yeah. Then I think we should be like, wait, what's you going on? You should both move to Spain. Well, have you had well, a yeah. hit? Have you had, like, do you have a song that someone's covered and that you've made a bunch of money off of? I have, uh, well, you know, I have Michael Stipe. Uh, covered in the sun with oh really yeah and so did Peter Gabriel um, wow and uh, that's pretty but, but serious people doing your songs it is and yeah. Chris Martin dude yeah Chris Martin with did Michael it Stipe. with Justin Timberlake too because Michael Stipe made like an EP of In the Sun ah, for Katrina okay, but okay so that's like, right they've always been for charity. That blew my mind when I heard that version. I love his reaction. That's so fucking great. Yeah. (laughs) When I heard, I he didn't tell me about. Why did it have to be you? (laughs) All these incredible huge people, and it's going to be for charity. That's funny as hell. No, I mean charity's great. I mean he didn't tell me about it. it. (laughs) He didn't tell me about it, and I found out about this thing, and I listened to it, and Michael Stipe is singing, and then for the chorus, Chris Martin fucking comes in. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Unbelievable, and I'm right. like, Joe, when the this fuck is did your this song, happen? Man, yeah. And he's like, Nah, it's like, what, whatever. <laughs> Come yeah. on, and, and I'm dude, not like that. I, I'm glad at it the happened. Time, I'm I grateful. couldn't, I couldn't believe it. It right. was uh, amazing. Right. Uh, amazing yeah version. and the black eyed peas did one like with with justin timberlake or something. wow no because he made an ep of it for katrina yeah here's funny it is a funny but still st- i'm sure you know you met everyone's like well this is really gonna raise your you know don't worry about well, you know this funny, is gonna raise your profile yeah. and all that kind of stuff which i'm sure it did yeah i'm sure know? it did but like and then peter gabriel actually covered in the sun before it came out before my version oh and he that's was, great and asked me if it was okay because he was like you know people are gonna think it's my song and i'm like Listen, just do it. That's yeah. that's great. And then he goes, it's for a Princess Diana tribute record, which was for an Elton John charity thing. And Peter was like, I'm trying to see if I can take some of the percentage and flow through to you because yeah. you're like a yeah. new artist and obviously, you yeah. know, not like financially right. well off, but that did, that couldn't happen. So yeah. Like, did that come out? I never yeah, that did came it out. before you released Actually, it. he just put out a whole big, huge compilation of tons I of his. I know about that. And that's and, on there. And that's on there, oh, that's too. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. What about you? Did you have anything like that? No, no one's ever done <laughs> Chris it. Chris Martin didn't call. Chris <laughs> Martin didn't call. I mean, small. you know, I, I, every once in a while I'll see a YouTube video of someone doing it, but I've never had anyone big do any of my songs. So. But mm. you probably thought at the beginning, like, hey, this might be another thing mm-hmm. you know i have friends now in nashville that have played my band and they're, and they're like staff songwriters and and they've had a few hits so 
You know what's funny about... But I've never had a hit. You know, yeah. I've had a, a few kind of indie popular records, but I've never had a... Like I've a, had, like, Honey in the Moon was kind of a semi... Not, not a hit, but it was on, like, uh, the OC, and it became popular. Good. Like, I've had a, I have a couple popular songs, right. I would say. Your Shrek yeah. song. I don't, think, I don't think I've ever had a hit, like, per se. Right. But some popular songs. But the funny thing about... The reason why Michael Stipe did the In the Sun thing is because... Um, he wanted to use it for this movie called Saved. But that was like back when, remember when you would get a sink and you would say no to sinks and shit mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. Like, Which you would it, never do now. Dude, you would never. <laughs> and then I, like, I even went, I went to the screening with a friend of mine and um, I don't know, for some reason I said no. Wow. I just, I, like, I don't know, I don't even know why. I just did. And, um, he and I was in New Orleans. I was kind of living in New Orleans at the time. Oh yeah. And so he called me there to like appeal to me to to let him use it. And I said, okay, you can use it. I'm, you know. Yeah. But then when Katrina happened, he associated me with New Orleans because of the 504 ah, area code. Gotcha. So it's because I said no that that cover even happened. Oh, okay. Isn't that isn't it's that good. like yeah, that's yeah. kind of an interesting right. like thing? Wow. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know what that lesson is, but. Yeah, I guess if you're dumb enough, good things happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm trying. All this was yeah. before, or after you toured with REM. Um, I don't, that's a good question. I think it was after. After, okay. So you already knew you and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you do? do you I'm do? a huge. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I'm a big fan, man. It's cool you even. Yeah, as a, any as a band with Peter associa association with him. Yeah. yeah, I'm in a band with Peter Buck oh, right nice. now. Arthur Buck. We Arthur put out Buck, we put like out a it. record and actually we we put we finished our second record but it's not we're looking for a home for it. Okay. I think he was talking to Yep Yep Rock. Yeah, cuz yeah, cuz he's done some stuff with him. Yeah. Yeah. They're good to nice. work with, huh? Yep yeah. Rock. Yeah. So do you do any side projects? Like or do you keep it Not really. I I want to do one. Uh I just don't have anything. I always have ideas and nothing ever I don't finish anything, you know, mm -hmm. or I'll do a few songs with someone and then we just kind of leave it and they move on. So. And then your last solo record before this Christmas one's called Modern Love. Is love right? in the Modern Age. Oh, Love in the Modern Age. Yeah. And it was kind of a different, you know, um, different production stuff. A lot of synth. Yeah. I so like a, it. a laptop record. You yeah. Know, but basically. that's cool. Kind of yeah. reminds me of Leonard Cohen. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of the, the 80s Leonard Cohen. Yeah. I like those records. When I was younger, I didn't. I thought Dude, these I, are cheesy. This sounds like I a love bad. Them. Yeah. I have a whole theory about it. Okay, what's your theory? Do tell. My theory is this. It's like if it's like putting a masterpiece in a cheap frame. Exactly. I know that's what he was wow. doing. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what he was doing. Yeah. yeah, and it accentuates the the masterpiece right. actually. Right. It's actually like counterintuitive, but like if you you know, and he sounds great when he when he's like quote unquote well produced. Yeah. Because I actually like the Casio keyboard vibe. I love it. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. And it's so un it's so distinctive. Yeah. And it is like putting a masterpiece in a cheap frame. It yeah. just makes it makes it that much more clear. Right. In a weird way. No, I, I that's it the same philosophy what is the cheap I frame the, mu the music yeah, it's like Casio keyboard ish production some of his which stuff which album he is all, like, kind of all of them kind of <clears throat> not all of them but um what's a, what's a good example if I want to I'm your listen? man I'm your man okay um that yeah that one especially is you know even everybody knows like isn't yeah. that one got that keyboard yeah. thing yeah yeah they all do everybody knows it's like yeah you know what I mean Right. Yeah, you go and he's got a mic like this, I'm sure, you know, and he's just, it's just, I like the production. I didn't like it when I was younger, you right. know, I think I was more folkier or whatever. And, and then, and yeah. then it wasn't until my late thirties that I was like, wow, okay, I get this. I know what he was doing now. Right. But that record definitely, I liked, you know, when I was in high school too, uh, in college, I got into the Blue Nile. Do you know that band? The Fuck Blue yeah, Nile. Dude. So that was a big influence. Uh, the guy who I was writing some of the songs with was like, man, let's do something like the blue. And I was like, yeah. So he had these cool, like, sus chord, big, beautiful, you know, ideas with these kind of uh, mellow beats, you know, behind it. And I was like, yeah. So I started writing lyrics over that, and that was kind of how it all got started. Oh, cool. So you were doing sort of top line writing kind of thing? Or yeah. Yeah. I yeah. like doing that, too. 
and yeah, or it'll just be an idea. Yeah. You know, and then oh, let's go here and do that, or this needs kind of to go somewhere else. And and I work well with it with this guy that I've been writing with for a long time. Did you tour that record, Love in the Modern Age? Yeah. Yeah. What is it like? Sort of. Uh, we didn't go all the way. I mean, I didn't have drum machines or anything. Oh, you didn't. No, no. We j I just used my my band. Hmm. You know. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Because you could have almost just done it with the laptop. I thought about that. Have you heard of Sleaford Mods? Uh uh. They're Good name. Cool. Yeah, well, they're a great UK. It's a laptop band. Dude, to the point where it's like you know, it's kind of like. Have you ever remember the streets? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's like that. It's like that kind of like. Oi, mate, you know what yeah. I mean? Is it? Yeah. Well, fuck, fuck it's right off. Right. Like, yeah. Like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. It's like that, but it's killer. But, uh, you know, we're going down like BHA. You know, like, uh, um, but live, it's two guys, and, and it's the guy who raps and sings, and the other guy just has a laptop like, and a laptop and he's sitting there holding like a tall boy beer and he just presses play on the laptop <laughs> and, and then like, it just, just hangs and hangs and then he presses stop. stop and then he presses play again it's like so fucking and they do like they did glass like a service and, animal there. they did glastonbury like that wow great and it kills yeah and it kills because the guy who sings it like you just realize all the intensity comes from the vocal. Right. It's like and yeah. the and the and the tracks are killer too. Yeah. Like, so but they're real minimal. Yeah. You probably like it. It's like well, ba bass loop and the, like a drum loop. Sometimes it's just drum yeah. and, and a bass, but not drum and bass. Yeah. You know. Sounds like you, Baxter Dury. You ever heard of Baxter mm -hmm. Dury, Ian Dury's son? He does oh, the same thing. Real minimal kind of bass and drums and yeah. and he's like, you know. So you thought of doing that. He's like uh, a Miami. Um uh. Yeah, no, it's always in the back of my mind. I do take an OP one out, right, and get right. a vocal mic and just, you know, under a different name. You, well, I've I've seen yeah. you play just looping yourself. Like yeah, I've been out. doing that a lot lately. Back to that. You are. Yeah. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. It's fun. And do you have the loop? You still have those old loopers that kind of sync <clears throat> together. No, I, John I mean, Bryan had those for. Yeah. What well, is it? The same brand? Yeah, Jam Man's. You I can't think. find those anymore, can I you? I mean, I have some, but yeah, I mean, you probably could. I mean, if you eBayed or whatever. Jam man. They don't make them anymore. Yeah. But, I mean, they got, you know, the Bose or Boss, however you say it. Oh, it's Boss. Yeah. yeah Bose's the headphones. But it's, I got the big Boss one now where there's three. And I just take, I just take them all out of sync okay. so that I can do, so they're not synced. So I can do as long as I want on any of them. And I sync them just with, like, the, my foot. With your foot. And it, it's cool because there's some sway to it then. Yeah, if you're like and more it, than 10 milliseconds off, it'll, will it get, it'll get it'll off. It'll get fucked up, but like it's, it's cool because once you know you're doing that, then like sometimes I'll like do a chord progression, try to put a, like a small loop beat on top of that. And sometimes it doesn't work, but like then you just like turn it off and you just like adjust on the fly. And if I want the beat locked... Yeah. Then I just do the beat first, and okay. then I can do chords to the beat, and that always is fine. Yeah. Because even if that's off a little bit, yeah, it's not going to be so off that I can't like stop, start the beat real quick, or do you know? There, I have like workarounds. Yeah. And I like having it being like out of sync, so I c it just gives it a bit more of a live feel. Well, you're so good at it, man. I blame you Thanks, and, and Andrew Bird for, I never got into it. You know, people yeah. asked and I was like, no, I saw you and then I saw Andrew Bird do it. And yeah. I was like, I'm not even going to go there, man. They're right. so good at it. You Thanks, know? dude. <laughs> Andrew's great now, too. Now so many people are. Yeah. Like well, there's... just because it's so expensive to bring people up. Well, that's cost of hotel rooms. That's, you know? I mean, that's it. That like funny. that's like the hotel. It's true, man. I mean, the cost of touring the cost is of touring. crazy. Dude, it's... To take a band out. But is... look at Ed Sheeran. Right. One yeah. thing I found funny was I saw. Oh, he does stadiums. Yeah, do, he, doing that with that little baby Martin guitar. But dude, when he did, it's when he did Citizen, Global Citizen, he he made it a point, which I thought was funny. See, so young. He was looping, obviously, but he made it a point to let the audience know that what he's doing is live. live. Yeah. Because, you know, to yeah. him it was like, yeah. just so you know, I'm not, this is like, I'm really doing tracks, this. Yeah. yeah. I was just. Yeah. Well, he, you know, he knows how to write great pop hits, man. I he's mean, got that, a great voice, too. I've seen him. Yeah. Sing, and it's just, wow. He's talented. <laughs> he's real talented. You know, yeah. it's like you can. You can drink haterade about it, but no, it's, but I'm saying it's he talented. can afford a band, but he still goes the looping route. Well, because it's, yeah, it's 
there's something about it that is entertaining. I, I kind of like, I fell out of love with it for a long time. Like I was kind of So like you quit a, playing oh, quit solo? Well, yeah, and I would just, even if I played solo, I wouldn't really lose. You just like, play your songs, yeah. But something about it, like I got re-engaged in it. Nice. That's the thing, like this kind of, do you find with music that like it resets itself for yeah, you and sure. certain things reset themselves? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, even, you know, I'm sure Mike, I've been like you, I've taken bands out or played solo, and then if you play with the band too much, it's like, I just want to break it back down to me yeah. playing. And then you do a couple shows, like, why, why did I play with a band, you know? Right. And then you get tired, and then you do a get whole year of that. of that, and you're just like, man, I need some company. And then I'll get a percussion player and be like, wow, this is great. You know? Right. So... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, one so of those got one of those. What are they called? Koi or what's it called? The oh, box? I just played with. It's called. Uh, well, there's one called a cajon, but cajon, yeah. but the guy that I play with here, he he plays a Brazilian one called a tan tan, mm -hmm. and it's round, and he plays it with the mallet, and it's. Is it build over? It's a hipper version of a of a cajon. No, his name's Robert Di Pietro. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot. Bill Dubrow. Yeah, oh, he Bill. Does, he does that. Yeah. Bill, Brazilian, shout out. I forget the name. Yeah, Bill I know Dubrow. Bill. Yeah, I know Bill. Yeah, He's it's that dude. same drum. Great dude. Great drummer, too. Yeah. So, what else? Like, let me think. There was something else I wanted to ask you about. No, it's fun talking to you because I haven't seen you in a long time. And, yeah. And I know... Uh, we've crossed paths uh, a few times in our life. But we're now. lifers in this. Right. You yeah. Know? Yeah, it goes back to talking, you know, I was looking at people. I just saw Hal Gelb the other day, and uh, he's like, I'm not, this is my last tour, Josh. He was in Spain, and I just happened no, to be there, uh, and he's like, yeah, that's it. I'm not, this is my last indie rock tour. He's like, I'm too grumpy. <laughs> I can't. He was like, I'll, you know, if there's a one-off or something, I'll go do it, but I can't life, book a like month. The problem he's is, a lifer. No, he's still going to make records and stuff, but, you know. And it could just be a phase. I think, yeah, exactly. But the touring thing does, especially, you know. It wears you out. Physically, all the travel and doing it um, mm -hmm. a lot. I've, I've actually hit a kind of a sweet spot where I'm just doing about three or four shows a month. Mm -hmm. That is a like sweet I'm doing, spot. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing like because that can make you Texas like, or and then the West Coast and then, you know, Spain and Portugal. You know, just something that's not overwhelming like you know three weeks and then a week off and three weeks or you know yeah and that you're doing be, that pretty much do you have a booking agent or are you book yeah. yourself yeah, yeah. Book, booking agent management all that so, yeah i mean that is success i mean it might not be like you know like what we were talking about before where there's no pressure anymore success or whatever but yeah like and i just i don't know like it's kind of like yeah i can't do this anymore thing but it's like you're on planet Earth. It's rough out here, dude. Try yeah. doing nothing. Try not doing this. Yeah. Because I went through like a phase of like you know kind of overcoming a lot of real personal struggle stuff, mm -hmm. and I wasn't doing this for a couple years. Oh, did you take a couple years off? Yeah, pretty much. Did you paint though, or you I, did you have I some mean, kind I of even, creative I outlet? Even, I even stopped doing that for a second. Like it was like you know you just needed to stop. I just needed to stop, I guess. Yeah. And. That's rough. You want to talk about rough. You, you wanted know, to stop and then you stopped and it even got worse is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, or like, or just, I didn't have the wherewithal to do it anymore, you know? So I'm very grateful, I guess. My yeah. gratitude for it is re-engaged. Nice. You see what I mean? Yeah, that, yeah. The thing that keeps the grumpiness away is just like being grateful for it. Like, that there's still people showing up or still dude, people interested. Even yeah. If, like, you know, it's like, even if it's like this little jam, this little place I'm playing tonight, you know, yeah. like, I'm grateful that, you know, yeah. people showed up yeah. and care. I'm the same way. You know, that yeah. had like, cause I remember back when I was like younger and like paying attention to them writing about Josh Rouse too much. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Like, yeah. That's when that's when I was grumpier, right? You know, now yeah. I, like I've kind of lost that. Yeah, I and think he might grumpy about that. You know, the hotel yeah. room sucks, and yeah. you know the logistics of it. Yeah, no, know? I get it. I, or actually, everything can make you grumpy. Oh, but, dude, yeah. But I'm I, like you. I'm grateful yeah. for. Um, I, I'm usually in a, in a good mood most of the time, and and I'm grateful that people are still paying attention, and yeah. I'm here talking to you, yeah. and you know. Still making music. Yeah, you, know? you just made a kick-ass Christmas record. Yeah. Everybody needs to get that. That's a good one. What's yeah. the name of it, Josh? The Holiday Sounds of Josh Rouse. And it's on Holiday Records. 
It's on Yep Rock Records. Oh, but it says holiday <laughs> on, on the thing, like on the in on iTunes. Oh, really? I think so. Maybe uh, it's a genre. It's on Yep Rock anyway. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's the genre. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, what's what's next after for you for next year? I don't know. You know, um, I kind of like to start a different. I have in the back of my mind, like trying to select songs that would work good for a different project, just a different name and and a different mm-hmm. project. But I have several dif- different ideas. You know, start a whole brand new thing. Yeah, even a band with my, you know, a band with some of my friends there. You know, mm-hmm. set up a couple mics. I have like a garage. A two-car garage has been converted into a, in a, a studio. Really? That's killer. Yeah, and it's got, I've got curtains like this and then carpet on the ground and wood panel. It's, it's like a 70s log. I live on Log Cabin Road, so we kind of made it like a log cabin. But right. we just rehearsed there for this tour, and I was like, man, let's just put a couple mics in here and, you know. Make a record. Make a record, because it sounds so good. You have a little studio? Yeah. What do you record I have on? two. I have one here, and then I have one in Valencia, Spain, too. Man, amazing. With uh, a couple other guys that I play in a band with there. They kind of run it all the time, but. Yeah. What kind it's of? It's got a lot of Josh Rouse posters in it. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's and the cool. vibraphone that I help buy and the, you know, and yeah. the, uh, you know, equipment and stuff. So That's cool. But they pay the rent on it, so. Neat. Wait, yeah. So what are you recording on at home? What do you mean? Pro Tools? Uh, I use Logic a lot. Logic. I do use Pro Tools as well. Yeah. Um, I still have my 8-track, too, which I'd like to get it serviced in. The tape. Yeah. Is that on cassette, the task scan? No, no. It's a, a half re- inch. Reel to reel. Reel to reel. Yeah, it's what I made my first rec- first record on. Yeah. Um, but I'm kind of going back to the eight track thing, too. I think anything more than eight tracks is... Limitations. Yeah. Are I'm great. I'm into that. Yeah. yeah. I heard some old demos that I did for my second record, and it was on that eight track. And I was like, this is great. Why did I put, you know, right. it's, it's tough when you get in the studio, there's so many options and it's, you can make it all that stuff. But sometimes it's just like plastic Ono band, you know, you just have the core ingredients there. Or even the Leonard Cohen record is like a cheesy keyboard and his vocal, you know. Yeah. yeah. He, he just put out a new, or his son just finished up. Adam. Adam. Yeah. You know Adam? I met him a long time ago. We were going to write some songs together and then nothing ever happened. He's a good dude. Yeah. Yeah, he, he just, is nice. He just finished up some of his dad's stuff, and I went, we went to a listening party. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and and more, much more organically produced, which okay. is which is cool because I like hearing him like that too. Yeah, and having his he son was working do it. those records he did with Madonna's producer, the ones that you know, the ones uh, like, uh, gosh, what's the, um think of the title of like around 2010 to 2015 what were the names of those records uh i can't think of them right now i'd, I'd have to look leonard cohen yeah but he was worked with like madonna's producer mm. you know on on a lot of that stuff I didn't like know he'd that. do the tracks and then leonard would just kind of make do his poetry over him oh that's cool yeah do you write like that where you write poetry first and then write over things or is it usually <laughs> melodic ideas uh, both I'll yeah. come up with a, what I think is a good title and and or a couple phrases and then I'll do that and, or then sometimes it's just the chords you know whatever speaks to me you yeah know, from the music how about you yeah both I've done I've done both kinds yeah but, um I think the song I, I don't know I think like if I, I should write more words first but I usually I don't. Tr- I know. I, I'm the same way. I, I do the exact same thing. I was like, okay, I'm going to do, I'm just going to work on. Fit some words into a melody. You know who I'm big into and uh, I'd like to recommend on your pa- podcast? Yeah, I was going to ask you. Kevin Ayers. Did you ever listen to Kevin Ayers? It sounds, I know the name. He was in a band called The Soft Machine. Oh, okay. Uh, from the 70s with Robert was, Wyatt. And isn't that, ro- no, not Robin Hitchcock? It's kind of prog. No, no, that's the soft, that soft boys. Yeah, Robin's got great lyrics too. Right, yeah, we've had him on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a Nashville dude now. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, that's he lives true. down the street. Shout out Robin Hitchcock. Yeah, um, so but Kevin Ayers Kevin has Ayers. great lyrics, and it's called the Soft Machine. No, no, he was in a band called the Soft Machine, but all Kevin Ayers solo records are great. Really? Yeah, the li- and just musically great and lyrically fantastic. Yeah, that's my recommend. Where is he based out of? Well, he's dead now, but he was. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. He had interesting, interesting life. You know, England. 
basically, but I think he was a son of, you know, some kind of a diplomat or something and kind of moved around. And, um, who else do you like? Um, who else do I like? I went to go see Devendra Barn- Banhart just put out a new Is it? nice record. Yeah, I went yeah. to go see him. I never met him and went and met him and he was like, man, it's like, I'm glad you're here, it's, you know. Listen, you know, you don't, sometimes you don't meet, you know, we've met each other. Yeah. Sometimes people you've been listening to for a long time, and you just don't cross paths. And he and, likes your stuff. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, well, let's, you know, keep in touch. But uh, he, he does some nice stuff. Um, and uh, there's a band called Vetiver that just put out a new good record, too. Mm-hmm. And that reminds me of R.E.M.'s early oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's definitely got that. Vetiver. It's got... Bucks, arpeggio, you know, that kind of thing. How do you come up with new, or how do you hear about the new stuff that's coming Well, out? they've been around for a while. They've been around for probably 15 years, I suppose. Right. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't, you know, just somehow. My wife keeps up with a lot of stuff, too. You know, she's always sending me stuff. You that's know, cool. She's got more time to uh, discover new stuff. But um, I don't think of anybody else right now off the top of my head that, it's been uh, blowing me away. Yeah, I I heard about you? Uh, the, the the fourth wanderers. You heard of them? Mm-mm. And uh, I like Lana Del Rey. Someone who's popular is Lana Del Rey's last record is yeah. really cool. I Have you heard it? it? No, I haven't listened. The to production's it cool on it. Yeah, it's just like they put one mic up in the room, like on the drums, as you know. Oh, almost really? Almost sounds out of phase. And I was like, this is cool for a big pop artist. Yeah. to do this and her vocals way up front and it's just piano kind of ballads and really yeah it's like wow this is brave huh i gotta you know? listen to that it's not like a you know the big produced pop music that's coming out now right on well that's cool man well thanks for doing the podcast yeah. dude thanks for having me man good seeing you again uh, yes good to see you too yeah. and where where do people find you um like give a, give a not your address not your address <laughs> but like uh, social media or like how do they look the I could do that out. though yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh shoot I did well, <laughs> we can edit that out no that's all right doesn't matter <laughs> I think Mac DeMarco did that and people started showing up at his house he put uh, it on his CD or something he put know? his real address yeah his real address yeah, on wow that. <laughs> that's funny um Josh Rouse.com. Josh, Josh Rouse.com. Rouse. Rouse. Yeah. And yeah. Instagram, Twitter. In, in, Instagram is Josh Rouse official, I think. Yeah. Uh-huh. Brock set it up. And yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, I'm touring around all the time. So go see Josh Rouse, everybody. He's yeah. a, a bad man. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out Come to Where I'm From. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated. <laughs>